Praise God. You must encourage and praise her. Do you understand? Okay. Um, <laughs> some people are just looking at me. Said I was going to bring serious man of God. See what they brought. He's he just here playing. Because some of you are too serious. Are you the only one that worries your president? <laughs> Thank you, Pastor, and to the leadership for uh, the opportunity. <laughs> you know, when you meet some Nigerians, Jesus. Bible says you cannot make the kingdom of God except you are like, no protocol. <laughs> She's not even thinking about that. She's happy. Some people, as I'm still speaking, some people are still frowning. <laughs> like what? Praise God. You know, the foundation that Julia began to lay is actually the foundation of the conversation we'll have when we're dealing with the equation, knowing God's will. A lot of Christians don't understand that the children of Israel could not assess the promise because they murmured. Because we murmur to sleep, we murmur to be awake, we murmur again to wake up. Anxiety is a proof of how far you are from God's presence. Your anxiety is a proof. Why? When you see the whole picture, when you look at the whole picture, every time I'm having a long journey, one of the things I need to keep my focus on is on the progress of the journey. I was having a conversation with a, a colleague just a few days ago, we were walking, and we began to talk about long flights, and I spoke about when I had to fly from Dubai to Washington, and it was 14 hours, 30 minutes. The first time I needed to do that, I was so concerned because I'd never flown that long. It was seven hours, eight hours. I really thought to myself, what would you be doing all of that journey? You'd be tired, you'd be, I mean, I could just imagine. Now, I had more concerns because I had never done it. So I woke up in the night and I was just like, what's going to happen for 14 hours, 30 minutes? One of the ways I tried to calm myself down was to remember that others have been doing it. And pilots do it every other day and it's normal to them. So I'm like, if humans do it, then it should be fine. But I was in the plane about seven hours in, I just took a walk around and I just realized, my God, we're about, okay, there was a, a, a point of that journey that we were on the Atlantic for seven hours. Like, if there's any emergency here and I die with this, we accept God help us. There's no emergency airport to land, now water they under. Do you get what I'm saying? All of that thought ran to my heart. But there's a difference between myself and a pilot or someone who understands aviation. You know, they understand, they understand the danger points, they understand the navigation, they understand the journey. All I could do was to look at the map of the travel, and that also gave me some calm. Because here's the deal, have you ever traveled, and the closer the milestone got, the happier you got? You know, I remember some years ago traveling from Mina, and you know, uh, when I started, I was so tired, I was driving, I was alone. But when you see five kilometers Abuja, you know that right now, the devils are behind and God is in front. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, that's the power of the milestone because it gives you an indication of the journey. When a believer begins to worry, they actually do two things. Number one, they are proud and arrogant. Worry is a proof of pride, and I will explain. Number two is because they don't know who their daddy is. I have a father, almighty father. He is king of kings. Excuse me? King of kings. And in babies, they worry for Nigeria. Worry is a proof of pride. What is worry? Peter, come. You are going to play God now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me show you what worry. I'm still finishing Julia's message. I've not started. Sit down. I on the throne, yes. Now, this is God Almighty on the throne. So, God says to me, I got it figured. Then I turn my back on him and say, you are such a useless person. Your words mean nothing. I'm better off with worry than trusting you. It's a proof of pride. It's taking the place of God. It takes closing your Bible, refusing to read it, refusing to believe it, to worry. That's why sometimes when the devil begins to get at you, the place you don't want to go is church because you don't want to get hope. You know that if you go to church, they will tell you it is well. It is well becomes irritating to you. You know, it's just like a sister that walks into this place who does not know that in God's calendar, by November this year, she would have been in the third phase of marital counseling. But right now, because she's so limited in her view, she thinks 
about the seven years that no man has greeted her, forgetting that one is greeting her next week and is leading to marriage. Why? Limited view and pride. God, you better stop talking to me. Because every time you speak to me, I get hope. I am tired of being hopeful. Because my hope always gets crushed. That's why Satan's greatest attack on your heart is an attack to think. Take no thought, saying. And how do you perfect thought? By speaking. That's how you met your friend last week. Say, this Nigerian, I die with him. It's not me, I die dying. Think no thought, saying. Thoughts are taken at the point of speaking. So that your amiable group is not helping you. Take no thought, what? Saying. Anybody that can make you voice what God has not said is an agent of Satan, and you are cooperating with them. It takes pride. Let me say something to you. My son walks up to me today, he's preteen, and says to me, he's bothered about his next school fees, I'm going to slap him. It's an insult. If God had my kind of emotion, all of us here would know the kind of flogging you would have taken. Because you are taking responsibility for what is not your responsibility. This is what I tell people. This is not my topic, but to perfect the foundation. I'm not responsible for my upkeep. Uh, say, sorry, Baba God. Go now. Yeah, I'm not responsible. My, my upkeep is not my business. I'll show you from scripture. Some people are looking for capital for business. Do you know it's not your business to find the capital? Who gave them the talents? Did they pray about it? He required profit of them. So you know what I tell God? Your store in my house is empty. Take no thought what you will eat or drink or wherewithal you shall be clothed. That's your business, man. But when it comes to profit, I can show you through scripture. He's my exceeding great reward. My supply is of him. There is a God part, there is a man part. Now let me start sneaking into my message and I'll go back to the notes I gave them to display for me when we get to scripture. That's why, oh my sister, please come. Ha, you threaten them that you tell me not to preach. You failed in your threat. Praise God, hallelujah. Brother, please come. I'm not joining them. I don't even know if they have... So it's not a prophetic action. It's just an illustration. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You're not even smiling. Go. Uh -uh. What if this is the opportunity God is giving you? Somebody that knows outside your greeting to answer your Climb up. I'm still finishing Julia's message. You thank God I'm not seeing timer. But they say he has finished his time. Time is a burden, as uh, Michael Oropa will say. They just enter the realm of the spirit and just spend time in the Lord. No, not time in the Lord. Spend the Lord. No vex, you. Uh, no, it's you that will not vex. Please lie down here. And face up. It's even very long. <laughs> Hide. Boom. Genesis 2, 18. Where do I find my scripture? I guess. Hide, hide. <laughs> the Lord God said, who said? It is not good for the man to be alone. Who said? Adam is worrying. Eve is talking about biological clock. The author of the conversation of marriage is not man but God. Now watch the scripture. Go to the NLT if you have, New Living Translation. Go to the NLT if you have. Then the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will. Who will make? Who will make? He will make? She will make? Now watch this. I will make a helper who is just right for him. Next verse. Pastor, they are buying out of my time. So the Lord God formed from the ground all the animals. Now we're going to jump this. Some of you have heard me teach about this. After God said it wasn't good for him to be alone, the next thing he saw was not Eve. Because sometimes we misjudge God's prophecy. God speaks about a thing, but we forget to ask him about the time. So our mind is so focused on the thing that we miss the time. So God said, Adam, not good anymore. Because for some of us sitting here, the truth is, there are prophecies hanging over your life that you have begun to doubt, not because God is unfaithful, but because you did not ask about the time. 
And our times and seasons are different. Just like Nathaniel Bossy sang, you got times and seasons in your hands. The curriculum is not mine, it's his. So what I need to do is to find out about his will, not impose my will on him. Do you understand what I'm saying? Next verse. Now, in verse 19, Adam took his prophecy in his hand and had to name animals and not date them. All right? Because for some of us, there is, see, let me tell you, the number of your exes is the number of the times you have missed God. So let's admit our foolishness and embrace it. So if you have seven exes here, you understand what I'm saying. Seven times of misfire. Boom, 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 boom. You know where Google goes. Boom, Mr. Get. Oh, now let me come this word. Boom. If I give up, then you come for counseling. Don't give up. Be encouraged. The problem is not the gun. The problem is not the target. The problem is the direction. So, just imagine, no, let's be honest. See, sorry, Adam, continue. <laughs> just imagine, imagine with me that Adam just married monkey. I'll show you why what I just said. The truth is, a lot of people come for counseling, they're married monkey. Watch, watch this. So the Lord God from the, from the ground, all the wild, <laughs> my wife is not wild. <laughs> Wild animals, all the birds of the sky, and brought them to the man to see, to see what he would call them. <laughs> Look at that. And the man chose a name for each one of them. You need to name some people and not date them. Mumu, idiot. No show. I no agree. Go. Watch, watch. You soon see why this is important. Next verse, next verse. He gave names to all the livestock and all the birds of the sky and to all the wild animals, but still there was no helper just right for him. His naming was a test to see if he got the picture because there was a picture given. So when he finished, God said, wow, the guy got it. He didn't pick any of this. What next verse? Next verse. So the Lord God cursed. Is at this point, this guy is ready. For every wrong one you chose, you delayed the right one. Adam didn't miss that. So the Lord God caused the wrong relationship will just stress you and waste your time. Bring you back to square one. Then we need to first of all delete the record. Like you install a wrong device. What did you do? You uninstall first to create space. Have you ever been in a place where you wanted to install something but there was no space? Then you went to the lesser apps that you don't need. There are relationships that apps you don't need. What did they do? They just made you disturb Brother Peter. Brother Peter, I don't understand this my relationship. In fact, boom. There's some people when they come for counseling, this is how I just pose and just be watching. You know when somebody starts speaking and from the first sentence, all you are seeing is mumu. Mm -hmm, mumu. Mm -hmm. But as counselor, you cannot tell them it's mumu say, oh my God. Wow. Really? That happened. I'm waiting for it to finish so that I can tell you. Cry very well. Cry. Some people need to cry. Jesus himself wept. Weep. <laughs> when you are done weeping, we will install sense and uninstall that nonsense. Mm. You know, hey, I had a drama yesterday. God took and Julia was not with me. I was ministering the youth conference, a church that brought in many of their um, um, many of their branches for the conference. Man, I've never seen something like that happen to me in ministry. But I was so glad. If I assured the leadership of the church, don't bother. When I, I'm putting out the video, but I did that part out. Somebody sent in a question. I have told my parents, if a woman stresses me three days, I'm out. I asked the person who read it to read it again. When he read it, I said, please ask a question by an adult. That's too childish. It was on paper, so we didn't know who. I was about to answer the next question, and a young man shows up walking towards the pulpit. You call me a child! Full grown man. They wanted to calm me. I say, You are a child. I pointed at him. I said, You take him out and I'll give him some counselors. My, my son at home will act like this. Y yesterday, not delivered. He was walking, walking to the pulpit. You call me a child. Hey, hey. From the pulpit, I said, Organizers don't be embarrassed. It's the body of Christ. That's what we teach. Imagine giving a woman to that child. You call me a child. Hey, 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 hey. 
God saved him, they caught him on time. If I reach my place, I had discipline him as a child to start with. Full blown man. Your paper hid your identity. You carried yourself, you brought yourself out. <laughs> Just yesterday, do I look like I'm not ready? <laughs> <laughs> When I got home, I sent my wife the link to watch the live before I edit it out for our own posting. My wife couldn't believe what was happening. I said, that's a child! Take him out! Even the people were looking, I said, don't be embarrassed, don't worry. I am your guest, but don't even think I'm all holding it against you. Take him for counseling, take him for counseling. Hey, let me leave yesterday. Watch this. Ah, this Eve is tired of hiding, keep hiding. This is what is happening with us. God, put me on display. I can't wait. See my shape. See my hair. I am ready to carry babies. You know, it's only girls that fantasize babies until they have one. When fantasy meets reality, the eye open. That's why after every child bed, they say they're not doing it again, but before I know it, next year. <laughs> hey, this is where some of you are. No visibility, no exposure, nobody's seen you. One year has passed, no high. You don't live by high, you live on purpose. So stop waiting for high to feel high. Do you understand what I'm saying? So the Lord God caused the man to fall in a deep sleep. This is where a lot of guys are. This is why guys date every and anything. God wants you to sleep. But your problem is that yesterday evening you were in Mitama at a birthday you had no business being. Because <laughs> you are looking for what is not lost. When you keep searching for what you can't find, you are missing direction. Something really touched me a few months ago. We just flew into Benin for a program. And I had been waiting for a visa interview. Someone was working on it. We just landed in Benin. And he gave me the call. We landed on a Thursday. I was to minister on this Saturday, and I was to leave back to Abuja on that Saturday. Adam is still here. It pained me. If this call had come two hours earlier, I would have picked the documents I wanted. Then I would have rerouted my trip to Lagos, attend my interview without coming back home. It pained me. We thought of many people, including Peter. But the documents I had to carry it would take me more effort to direct anybody to where it was at home than coming back to Abuja. So painfully, we closed down all those options. Interview was 7.30 a.m. on Monday morning in Lagos. I was coming back from Benin on Saturday evening. So that's how painfully I booked another flight. Got into Abuja on Saturday, first flight Sunday, back to Lagos. Why? The direction I had, I could not pass to anybody. That's the problem of a lot of men. Now look at that scripture. God caused the sleep. The man caused the man to fall into a deep sleep while the man slept. Who did the sleeping? Who did the sleeping? God caused the sleep. Man did the sleeping. What's the place of sleep when we have... I'm still trying to finish Julia's message. I know some people have attacked this song. I'm not joining them to attack it. I'm just singing. Because I don't know why they're attacking itself. It's everything you must attack. I will pray, I will pray. I will pray, oh, I will pray. If I don't pray, Satan will make mess of me. That's the prayer a lot of people in the body of Christ need to pray now. Because the mess that is happening to our minds, to our thoughts, is because we are not spending time here. This way Adam began his sleep. You told me it wasn't good for me to be alone. I don't exactly know why I saw two million animals. I named the one I can see and even the one I saw through my spirit eye in the future that you have not created. I've given their name. It was you. I did not debate with you that I was looking for a wife. You came to me and said, wife. Now you say I should sleep. I don't even know what I'm going to see now. Whether it's reptile or I don't know. Let me sleep. If you want to know the power of while the man slept, have you ever been sleepy, but because you are watching a program on TV, you refuse to sleep? Sleep can come, and you can refuse it. 
For some of you listening to me, man, God has told you not to date for one year. Calm down. You are refused to calm down. You're on your third girlfriend in that space of time. Hey, pastor, in case you receive a memo, don't bring that guy to our church again. Know that Satan is trying to use the person. Sleep! Don't to every man near you that is single. Say sleep. Jerry, sleep! <laughs> sleep! Sleep is the place of peace. You see, this is your sister. I slept over her matter. When we're in Abu, you find girl. Chungu, chungu, men were just flocking left, right, center like flies. Hey, 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 hey. If I say this girl, no, they're not training her well. When I know, she will not come back. Hey? Men, piam, piam, piam. Me that God gave me something. <laughs> level, level, level. <laughs> hey! 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 Go! Let me carry and go house. Can you go finish your ping pong? One even told her, instead of you to marry character, you are following charisma. Me. <laughs> she came to me and counseled that somebody was asking her out. Me that was interested, she converted me to counselor. <laughs> but the power of sleep, not by power, not by my, but by my spirit, says the Lord. You know what I told her? If you like him, you have peace in your heart, go ahead. Why? There's a sleep. What God can't give, I won't take. I'm telling you a real life story. She came two weeks later, no, 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 no. I mean, she was just sharing with me, it's like I took it that she wants to date the person. In my heart, I was dancing. Oh, 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 oh. Physically, I was saying, are you sure? <laughs> she said, she's sure. I said, are you sure? Guess what? I still felt a restraint in my spirit not to ask out. When God delays, he's walking. So I stayed back. Man, I was dying. Oh, boy, talk now. Hey, how many of you are eager like here? We are not struggling for food. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's why if you are dating anybody that is dating multiple people, you don't have sense. So you just devalue yourself. You are just there as an option. Girlfriend A, step forward. <laughs> Girlfriend B, step forward. Hi, time is a body. Anybody that makes you an option is not the option. Finish. Next verse. Next. That, that, let's finish so that we can release these people. This is the condition of many of you. Lord, I don't understand. Oops. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. While the man slept, the Lord God took. Oppression has started. And we often don't see the oppression because all of you seated here cannot remember what happened last night while you were sleeping. You can't. Why are you trying to figure out what in the curriculum does not involve your active participation? So God began to operate. Then God took, watch this, took out of the man's rib and closed the opening. He does a perfect oppression. You just wake up. Now, you woke up today feeling like today is just another day, but God has done something big that you are not aware of. You are totally blind to his walking. That's why I cannot worry because sometimes you're just looking at a circumstance you don't understand. I know in whom I have believed. It was Job that said, what stares me in the eyes is the grave. But I know my redeemer lives. Just like the psalmist said, I had fainted unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Then God took when God interacts with earth, he interacts through time. God is eternal. So sometimes, until God comes like Christ to feel the feelings of our infirmity, he doesn't even understand our agitation because he sees the whole picture. He's never blind. So he took, in the context of time, time began to read. Five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, one year, two years. Let's read scripture now. Formation is going on. He knows nothing of what's coming. 
He's never seen her kind. He's never seen her type. He doesn't know what she looks like. Yet, he's sleeping. That's why for a lot of us, the standard way God answers us is by peace, not by things. Philippians chapter 4. So you prayed for money. The money didn't hit your account. But you just wonder why we are so much at peace. The money is yet to come, but the answer has come. Because the answer is first peace before things. Be anxious for nothing, but in all things by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request known unto God. And what follows? Oh, and it's peace that passes all understanding. We garrison your heart. In essence, it will bring you to remembrance of truth and say, my son, relax. He was there. And Satan is very smart. Can I have three ladies? Illustration. Three ladies. Illustration. Ladies, ladies, ladies. One, two, three. Please come. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. In fact, yes, 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 yes. Until you pop your earring. Very fine. Blink, blink. Yes, yes. Just stay there, stay there, stay there, stay there. Number one, come. It's in this process. It's in this process, boss. Stand up. Ah, uh -uh, at once. Wait, first. This man is supposed to be sleeping because this God, this God is too good. Oh, I will worship him forever. Love him forever. This is the location of the work. This is the location of the destruction. So the moment his eyes wakes up and loses focus on the one who made the promise, Options will begin to show. She's got a lot of money. The problem is not her. The problem is not her money. The problem is that you are awake. You are seeing what you should not see. Just like when David was on the rooftop when he was supposed to be at the war front. He see a woman. He called for the woman. He finished the woman, killed the husband. Location. She's not fine. You want to lie? She's fine. She even has red lipstick with papangolo earring. You can go. God will give you your own. Not this one. Hey, who told you to go? This one can't wear jeans. Can't carry hair. Plenty hair. They smile. She can't even stop smiling. Mola to primola. See, you are awake. That's your problem. You are awake. Who sent you to be awake now? She's even blushing already. White teeth, teeth everywhere, just white, white, white. Your own God has arranged your own, be going. Ah! Ule, what do you know? Oibo, I greet you. You are awake. Your nose is even sharp. Chai! La Fulani, Jesus! Ha! This is your hair, you made it recently, but Like three days ago. Eh? Ha! Yesterday! <laughs> My God, she made hair and you're awake. <laughs> My father asleep. My dad asleep. My dad asleep. Sleep. Okay, you're fine though. But this one. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. This is how God mercifully puts us through some breakup to put us back to sleep. If you wake up again, I'll remove belt. <laughs> But here's the deal. God is never fussy on our will. If you choose nonsense, he will allow you to have your nonsense. Never. Scripture. See what your teaching is doing. See what I'm doing. How many means do I have left? I don't know where to finish my... Aha, auntie. By this time, if she doesn't sit in God, I may be meeting her with seven exes. Because she's been hidden. She's been hidden. Next verse. Then the Lord God formed a woman from the rib, and he who brought her to him, who brought her to him, skirts going up, blouse is going low. Connect me to that dating site. I 
I want to spend a weekend in your house. Who brought her to him? Read Bible now. And the Lord God made a woman from the reed, and he brought her to the man. Stand here now. Hey, level, 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 level. Somebody come on the keyboard. Hey, open my eyes, oh Lord. Hallelujah. He's even happy like I'm giving a wife. See, see, problem. He's smiling. <laughs> Give me one Nigerian movie sound that will wake him up. When you hear the sound, arise. We'll start you from this church. Oh, oh yeah, give me something. I'll be playing a soft romantic one now. Okay. Watch this. I'm going to be reading, you are going to be acting. Next verse. At last, the man exclaimed. Not, I don't even know this relationship where it's going to. At last. A sense of excitement. This is it. Not your mother and my mother are friends. I don't even know where they are forcing us. At last. At last. Do at last. Let me see. <laughs> Show me some excitement. Do at last. This one, not this two, not this half, this one, this one, with certainty. Not a, let's see where it's going to. Am I an experiment? Do I look like guinea pig to you? Let's see where it's going to where? When a man tells you that nonsense, tell him go to the airport. When you reach the airport and they say show tickets, say, let's just be going first. This one is born from a bone, and flesh from a flesh. She will be called woman because she was taken. Adam was asleep, but Adam knew the transaction. Adam knew. This is how we can talk about divorce proof home. Because Julia is not just in my life conditionally, Julia is in my life decisionally. So it's not an emotion I felt. Yes, there are emotions. Now, let me say this to you. The emotions I used to have for your sister, I don't have it again. I don't. I was such a fool. Mumu. We will talk. We claim we'll go to class to read. Mommy is here, so I'm so glad the close of this testimony is that from the time she started dating me in school, her result went higher. Because I brought some wisdom. I brought sense. Me. Is it a lie? But Mumu. Emotion was worrying me. We will go to class today. We will talk, 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 talk. We will finish early hours of the morning. Then they now introduce all this uh, midnight call. They will be talking again. We don't, I can't remember what we are talking about. Talk, 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 talk. Noise. Then fantasy met reality. Relationship began to travel. And all those mumu emotions fell apart. The kind of emotion I have for my wife around is the one that I generate. Generator. Do you understand what I'm saying? For instance, my simple formula in life to be happy is to make my wife happy. Finish. Once this girl is happy, I'm made. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, I, 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 well, I'm here, mommy is here, but let me just say it. Eh? You see, right now in my life, for instance, I told her and it has been happening, it's real. Apart from taking care of my family, every money I make, she has a percentage like tight. The way you have, you all got tight. Percentage of do anything. Why would she not pray for me to have money? Till she come and be fighting me. Just how I say? Because 
Like I was teaching somewhere yesterday, there's the act of marriage, there's the art of marriage, A-R-T. You see this girl? She's in trouble. I have arranged her thinking so that I can have peace. I'm just coordinating her like remote. Move. Stand up. Sit down. By action. So the few married persons around, you see your wife is troubling you, carry your remote. Things like kind words. Think like alarm, not alert, alarm. Alarm is the one that when you enter, your wife say, what's it for? I just love you. I just love you. Some quarrel in your house is money. Nothing is money. Sacrifice. I tell people, every time we are left in one car, it's her car. Why should I be cruising to work and she's joining along? That means something. You're not a man. A boy. Nobody should stand up, boy. <laughs> At last. Now, watch this. Next verse, so that they can go and sit down. Hey, they are shouting at last on top of your head. See, I'm just smiling. Smiling. This explains why. Who was Adam's daddy in, on earth? Don't tell me God. Physical father? None. Who was his mother? None. That's not my teaching tonight, so I'll not enter. God used Adam to tell all of us that all these mommy boys and daddy boys, daddy girls, on your wedding day when you are doing daddy dance, it's closing ceremony. Daddy, you are gone. Leave me to enjoy my home. Uncle, you have girlfriend? <laughs> yes, you. No. You don't have any. But you want very soon or you want already? Not yet. Uh, Not yet. Uh, yes. Like how many years more? Like five years. Five years more. <laughs> okay. Five years. You will start the journey. Yes. Father, five years. How far? Anybody right now? But there are some applications. They are checking them out. Yeah, just one or two. <laughs> Your eye will see where we're. <laughs> Clap for them now. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I'll speak to a few things I wrote down before my wife. Uh, did what she did. It's a continuation, not mine. So God has a will on every matter like I've shown. Because there's a confusion that people, you know, peddle in the body of Christ that I don't believe in. People talk about he that finds a wife like God designed any man to walk without him. The day you start doing anything without the Lord, you have missed the way. So God has a will on every matter. It's part of what I've, I've explained already. All right? Again, God will not force his will on anyone. Now, time failed me to explain the intricacies of what happened. Do you realize that before God put Adam to sleep, God was the one speaking? But after God brought Eve to him, Adam was the one speaking. That's the role of man. Because God will play his part, then the man will play his part. Let me say this to you. A lot of relationships, when I see them, I can tell you the marriage will have problem. Ask me how. The principles that establishes a thing will play a key role in how the thing runs. So... If you procure a man for yourself, he's very likely not going to be a leader. He must be able to take initiative. So God wanted Adam to speak as much as Adam spoke when he brought Eve. What God did was, God put him to sleep, he slept. God woke him up that the woman is here, and God stepped aside to watch Adam take the woman. His leadership was not going to be in question, because he started the journey by taking responsibility. So, don't, don't force him, push him, push him, push him. No. God's will operates by the cooperation of man. That's what the Bible says, that faith without works is dead. That's why when you read in Romans chapter 4, for instance, Abraham, although he was past age and Sarah's womb was dead, the Bible said he judged him faithful who had made the promise. Why? His role was to judge him faithful. His role was to play a part. And you know, we don't often say this in church, but here's the deal. Sarah did not conceive in the immaculate sense like Mary Abraham believed enough and dragged his old self to go and have sex with her. See what I'm saying? So there's a male, there's a man part. The part that humans play. And that's why, again, time fails me to say. A lot of guys in church need us to even stand and teach them how to get a woman. Why? Proverbs 4, 7. Say wisdom is the principal thing. Love is not. You can love a person and not know how to take them. You can love a person and be having a rocky relationship with them. Why? The NLT says it this way. 
Getting wisdom is the wisest thing. Like I tell guys, you don't woo a woman that you have not wowed. Why? Your action must go above your words. So that when your words are coming, you have already laid the ground for the yes. Do you understand what I'm saying? Clap for me. They are not clapping. Thank you. No. Yeah. Ha! Emily, Emily. Emily started clapping. You understand what I'm saying? Do you get what I'm saying? Yes. Do you get what I'm saying? So it's so important. Next point I need to highlight, then we'll get into a few scriptures and wrap this up. Right? You must realize that the flesh is an enemy. You know, a lot of times we get confused because the flesh is on our body. It's on us. So we find ourselves, yeah, thank you very much for this. I don't need this anymore. Realize that your flesh is not your friend since it is falling and needs the leadership of your spirit. I'll give you an example. <laughs> so you want me to come and stand here and lie to you that the only person that gets my attention is my wife. If I see any woman, say nothing will happen. <laughs> Bible did not say we should even overcome that temptation. It says we should run. She will flee. 440. The flesh is not your friend. Like sisters, let me tell you the truth. Oh, like my wife, when I met her. She says, she's not even thinking, like that guy that said five years, for 10 years, I crushed that nonsense. Can't 10 years. She's in my house. Do you get what I'm saying? 10 years, she's not even thinking relationship. Let me give you some examples. The chances are that somebody that looks closer to your age as a sister does not look like somebody that can marry you. Not because God says so, but because your flesh is looking at his car, his job, his everything. Then your eye senator that will not win this next election. <laughs> flesh. Why? You are processing marriage through your comfort, not his will. You are processing marriage through your comfort. You are just thinking of living in Metama. You know, some sisters are very wicked. Your father, your father lives in one man village. He's 67. 67. Then you meet Peter, who is 22. You are putting a Sokoro demand on 22 years old. When the one that trained you at 67 cannot even answer, we say. That's what your flesh will do. Let me tell you, I know too many former big men to trust money. First Timothy chapter 6. Don't trust in uncertain riches. Don't. It's on this basis that with the help of God, the cooperation of a woman, and good families that are married two months after passing out from NYC. Because the future was too bright to trust the present and not take a decision. Too bright! Why? Paul says, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh. The only decision you can take in the flesh is a wrong decision. So both to male and female, let me say this to you. If you don't spend quality time in prayer as a single to condition your spirit to pick the voice of God, you are very likely to make more mistakes in life than you can imagine. And you know the mistake people make? They want to know how to hear God when it's time to take marital decision, when they have not known how to hear God on their daily lives. Because I must have a walk with him that makes it easy to hear him on every matter. And guess what? The marital relationship is such that it's deep in a lot of emotion that if you have not established how you understand the voice of God, it becomes difficult at the point you want to take a decision that can easily get you selfish. Tall, dark, handsome, fair. I can't, I can't sell people. I can't sell somebody. She just wants her girlfriend, his girlfriend to add a little more weight. I'll just take him to the potter's wheel, give him clay, bring her in, lie her down, melt her, and restart. <laughs> restart. You meet some, she, she can just reduce small. Hey. Do you realize that women marry men who have six pack but are living with amusement park? <laughs> Things will change, oh. So you need to listen beyond your flesh. Is it good to love what is good to you? Absolutely. I like my wife. I like her style, her shape, her figure, blah, blah, blah. Oh, beautiful. But guess what? After three children, 23 kg happened. You can't say. So they say, marry what you can carry. You can come to a point you may not be able to carry what you married. You can't say. Hey, all is well. What the future? That's what First Peter chapter 3 is so clear. Hey, God, the days to speak like this in this church. You know, men just like, you know, 
It doesn't have pillar. It is to fall. You know, you understand? <laughs> and let me tell you, Pastor, <laughs> you know some of our brothers, they don't have sense. Sometimes what you're admiring is padding. It's not a written. Do you understand? <laughs> That's why people will marry. Go house. They see the written. Hey, whoa. Oh, don't care to be your neighbor. <laughs> Be careful. No we no man after the flesh. That's why First Peter chapter 3 says that our beauty is not just in adorning the plating of the hair. The wearing of beautiful apparels. But of a gentle and a quiet spirit. There's something that won't change if that's the quality we got. I tell you the truth. She met me a law student. Later her boyfriend became a law graduate. Later he became a lawyer. Later he became a notary public. Later he got a master's. Later he got this. We're taking things on in life but they don't define us. The most consistent thing since my wife left me is my Jesus. Most consistent. Every other thing has adjusted. Even size. You think this is fashion? No. This can still go here. I've been wearing it here for like 12 years, but it's tighter. So sometimes I just, you know, just put this one on here. And since I want to have the second one, I just put it on. It's not fashion. It needs to be more comfortably here. Do you understand what I'm saying? Praise God. So beware of your own flesh. All right, next, next, next point, next point. Thank you very much. Let's, let's take it on and close this. So following God's will is going to be a decision, not an emotion. That's why Jesus in Gethsemane went against an emotion. I know the questions that come after this kind of teaching. So are you saying that God can direct you to marry somebody you're not attracted to? Can we define attraction? Because for a lot of people in this generation, attraction is a demonic orchestration to distract them. And I'll explain. Until 100 years ago, modeling featured more plum women than today. Now, it is those who are ready to starve. You have no idea how much the culture of the day has cultured what you think you like. Until somebody tells you the truth. It's a counseling we do all the time. Somebody gets the right person, filled with the right spirit. And you're coming to me, you just reach his, his one inch taller, buy a shoe that is padded, that's all. Just go and pad the shoe. Everything ticks, every right thing ticks, just a little. You want to be careful. Now, here's the deal every time you follow God's leading, you would realize that some of the preferences you had were not necessary. You just begin to have a rethink. So it's so important, first of all, to get the subject of knowing his will. All right? Next, next slide, next slide. I'll say a few things that will push that on. So God will speak. That's, um, if you're on a cover books, please get my book. It's just 500, so this is not about selling a book. Knowing God's will for marriage, I explain inner voice, audible voice, dreams, vision, trances, parents, pastor, prophet, and all those voices that come at you. But let me say this to you. Every time you feel led, it must line up with the word of God. Every time. For instance, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Do not be unequally yoked to unbelievers for what fellowship has light and darkness. So the first test is the test of the word of God. It must line up with the word of God. All right, again, let's go to the next. I think I just wrote a few of them that would, that would just guide us. All right, so God will also guide. He's not just going to speak. He's going to guide. You're going to find wisdom when necessary. All right, do we have scripture for that? Let's, let's do that. All right, so God's will guide. Now, getting wisdom is the wisest thing, all right, you, you can do. And whatever else you do, develop good judgment. Develop good judgment. You know, I'm amazed. See, I've watched some relationships crash. I didn't need to tell them to crash. I just watched them. Somebody brings somebody to me and I'm, everything in me is crying. No, no, no. But I can't tell you. How long do I choose for you? So I ask some questions. Oh, like a lady brought a guy to me. My God. I didn't speak with them five minutes before I knew she was in danger. But her eyes were so blind, I let her walk away with that blindness because I asked some questions that began to make her question a few things right in my presence, pretending she was okay, but I knew it was coming to an end. Why? Good judgment was lacking. 
Now, the word good judgment there is the word discernment. The reason a lot of people get in trouble when it comes to marital decision is that they follow observation more than discernment. Observation is what I can see. Discernment is what eyes may not see, but I can perceive in my spirit. Let me tell you, a lot of people are coming to church who God has not come into. So you may see them in church. It doesn't mean that God, you know, has done a work in them. And guess what? Rush can crush. Like Isaiah say, he that believes does not make haste. I'm tired of counseling people who are at the brink of breaking the relationship, usually between the second and the fourth month. And the number of times they have had sex is mind-blogging. So this person is feeling used. A lot of people who say, I feel used, they use is because they actually, <laughs> it is well, be guided. What should you do even when you come into the process? Slow things down and judge. We teach that you must sit on the judgment seat in relationship. Why? In marriage, thou shalt sit on the mercy seat. Because you shall have mercy on what you choose. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's so important to sit in the place where you are able to judge, where you are able to test our spirit. If God tells us to test our spirit for prophets and for pastors, why shouldn't he test who should be in your life forever or for the rest of your life? Again, can you understand scripture? When the Bible says very clearly that by their fruits we shall know them. So you begin to date a guy. You want to see fruits. And people wonder, when I speak like this, what fruit are you talking about? Is that when he's in church, he's doing mangandam? <laughs> Ask yourself, I'm joining myself to him to take me where? Where is he taking me to? Can I see proof of that journey? So I come into your life. Are you trying to get us to read a book? To pray a prayer? To attend? What are you getting us to do? If I give you six months, what will you demonstrate in the relationship in six months? But at that time, what do we do? Before I know you were planning a wedding, they were that marriage. We get shocked like naked wire. Mm. God will guide the process. He'll guide the process by his word. He'll guide the process by counselors. Let's, let's go to the next slide. Now, I'm just going to rush through this so that we can take the question time we, we're to have. All right? So, uh, spirit leading. Now, if you look at this, uh, let's have that scripture. Thank you. All right? But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. Not my truth, your truth. All the truth. Even in this matter, there's the truth. All right? He will not speak on his own. Now, if the Holy Spirit will not speak on his own, but speak for the Lord, who are you to speak on your own without him? This is where people get it mixed up. Now, this is God come as his spirit. Still telling you that what he will teach you will be in line with his spirit. Then people tell you, no, it's man that chooses. And they say, he that finds a wife. There are different he's in scripture. There's a he that doesn't have God. There's a he that has God like you and I. We're led by him. All right? Next point. Next point. Let's just run through. I said a lot already. This is another way he'll guide you by godly counsel. Part of what is going on here right now is godly counsel. Scripture. Let's have the scripture for that. Godly counsel is going on. All right? It's shaping how you think, how you perceive things, and how you pursue things. For lack of guidance, a nation falls, but victory, won, victory is won through many advisors. That's how you win victory. But here's the deal. You don't meet people who give you opinion. You meet people who give you counsel. Opinion is my thought. Counsel is God's thought. That's why I tell Julia, as a power church minister moving from church to church, ministry to ministry, my baseline is very strict. It is that my opinion, when I air them, is based on the word of God. If somebody doesn't like me and doesn't bring me back again, it means they don't like the word of God. Because I'm very sure if you manage to take note of all the scriptures I've been giving you since I've been teaching, is a lot of them. All right? So when we speak about advisors or counsel, we're speaking about people who speak the will of God to you based on the word of God and not just mere opinion. Because let me tell you, opinion abounds in the world today. Especially in our social media generation. Everybody's opening a relationship page. Everybody's a relationship teacher. Everybody's a relationship counselor. Be careful what you hear. See what you hear. Yeah, next. Let's just run through. So there's no confusion. Let's have the scripture. For God is not a God of disorder, but a God of peace, as in all the congregations of the Lord's people. Here's the deal. This is my standard answer to, it's God's will, but I'm not attracted. It's God's will, but I don't like her. <laughs> Let me tell you this. If you can call a thing God's will, that complaint you have, 
carry it to God and say, show me mercy. Hollywood has scattered my brain. If you can see the leading of God, but your preferences wants to mess it up, I tell you the truth, I lie not. As a counselor, you sit with people who know or knew, no knew, which are exactly where they left God in God's leading for them. It's a painful place to be. Will God show mercy? Absolutely. But you, who have not traveled that path, I tell you the truth. I tell people, rather than fight what God leads them to, take more time to pray. Why? It's not every time that our prayer is about, God, give me this. A lot of times, our prayer is a prayer in Gethsemane, where he knew that this cup is my cup. I hate the cup, but I'm going to just surrender. And guess what? I've not met anybody who surrendered to God's will and regretted it. What happens is that with time, you just realize, why was I so stupid? Why was I having all of those shiki shiki shiki? And ladies, let me tell you this one. Every lady, listen. Listen very carefully. Because there's an emotional point of deception. And I'll speak to the guys too. If you receive attention, affection will grow. So for a lot of ladies, what they call preference is that they have exposed themselves to an attention they should not have. Take one week caring for any girl she you think you love her. One week. Something will just shift in her brain. Oh my God, I've never seen his kind. Thank you. <laughs> this is the 17th time you are saying it in two years. Every time new special will show up. That's why their standard, one of the most, one of the commonest counseling for women, he used to give me a lot of attention. He was just grilling you like fish. Because, Next. I'm just exposing the secret of men. You just met a guy yesterday at a wedding. He has chatted you 17 times today. Before you came into his life, what was he doing? <laughs> Girl number, what are you? Don't marry a man to whom you are the most important thing on earth. You'll be disappointed. Your reign will not be as long as Buhari's second term. In a short while, you will realize that he took a break from his real life to give you that degree of attention. It's not like this is my wife now. Come and deceive herself. We got back from SA on Monday. I've been more at work from the day we arrived on Monday than at home. That's why I couldn't make church today. I was sleeping like a drunk. We just concluded the job yesterday. When I spoke about where I went to minister yesterday, I had done, yesterday was Saturday, yeah? I, had, I left the house when I came to refresh to continue. It was a time-bound walk. I left the house on Friday morning. I only took off that cloth yesterday morning when I walked into the house about after 10. Had my bath, got in the clothes, went to preach, and came back again to the office. She finally picked me yesterday, her deliverance, after six days in the evening. So today, I slept through the night, woke up, they said they were going to church. I thought I was dreaming. <laughs> I continue. Say, man comes into your life. He's treating you like the most important thing there is in the universe. And you're excited. It's for a tenure, two years. Some is one week. So as he's giving you the attention, just tell him, oh boy, I appreciate it. What's the real thing you want to do with your life? Because if he has no real thing to do in life, he's a frustrated person. You are not his purpose. You are his helper. So why are you making me your purpose? You see the secret of that deception that is to last only two weeks or three months? Julie, it's not like I give me attention. Attention, fire. Are you his purpose? You know now. After 12 to 13 years, I should be lying to her. She knows. I love you, Shah. What he can say. But the people of God must be taught the word of God. Next, 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 let's wrap up. I know my time should have been up by now. Mm hmm. Hey, Pastor. Eh? That was the last one. No, it's not true. They didn't copy it well. Oh, that was the last one. Oh. <laughs> Praise God. Okay. Let me, let me now wrap up. God is not the God of this order. Let me say this that I thought I wrote <laughs> more. Let me say this and cap this up. Relationships 
and marriage have led to some wrong doctrine being taught today. And that's a problem. I will highlight this. I won't be able to teach it in full. Christian relationships and marriage do not fail because they are not God's will. Marriages made in heaven fail on earth through the stupidity of man. Because there's a wrong judgment we attach to everything that fails. So when we have the conversation on the will of God, you need to see the participation of man before you place judgment. I'll give you an example. I'm convinced till Jesus comes that I should have married and I indeed have married this woman. But the experience she has here has something to do with my continuous obedience to the Lord and not because God did not choose it. So let me say this to you before you get into a relationship or if you are in a relationship or in a marriage right now. When you sit down to study the difficulty of that relationship, it has something to do with your level of maturity. And I'll give you parameters to judge that. Marriage is an oath of death. So when single people want to marry, they don't even know what they're looking for. Total oath of death. The day I chose this marriage, I buried my will for his will. So people are bothered about the will of God towards choosing, but not big on the will of God towards running the relationship. I'll give you an example. My mentor in this marriage is very simple. He was never married in the physical sense, but he's currently married. Jesus Christ, the husband of the church. My standard is very simple. It's not Hollywood. It's not Bollywood. It's not any of the words. He says, so husbands ought to love their wives as Christ loved the church. That's his will. Why was I bothered about his will in choosing and come here now and become Lord and Master in Daboski himself? No. Her experience in this marriage is as stable as my submission to his will. So he said, so ought men to love their wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself. How did Christ love the church? The Bible said, why were yet sinners? In essence, from the day she got married to me, she no longer is to earn my love by anything she does. I should love her by default in good and in bad season. I know every girl wants to marry that kind of a man. So that should be my standard. Then we live in a feminist generation. They just want to know God's will so that the man will have sense. But they don't want to have sense, so they are feminists. How can sense and lack of sense combine and produce sense? Do you see why people come to church and look for girlfriends and boyfriends? Because they know amongst you, all is well. He respects God. He's a leader in church. Holy Spirit can talk to him. Holy Spirit, don't talk to me. Focus on him. That's a fool. Because the formulas of God are not selfish at all. The marriage is not even for any of you. It's for him. Like Julia read in Malachi 2.15, at the end of the day, he wants to take glory. So if you approach the conversation we are making tonight from selfishness, somebody to make me happy, somebody to read, somebody, 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 it's always about somebody doing something. The starting point and the ending point of a relationship that will be dipped in God's will and give you the best is when it is done in surrender to his will. And as I speak tonight, I know in my heart there are people here who need to make total surrender. Some is because of trauma, real trauma. You've been hurt. I know nobody told you that you played a part in being hurt because you were shaped to take choices you should not have taken. I know some of us are dealing with fear. Julia taught a bit on that. God has not given us the spirit of fear. That fear is alien to what God wants to do in your life. I know a lot of us are dealing with stuff in our heart when it comes to this subject. But let me say this, and that's my closing word. If it begins in obedience, bringing everything in obedience to Christ, aligning everything, in obedience to Christ. Let's just bow down our heads. I know we won't take questions, but can we pray just two minutes? Can we make a surrender tonight? All the desires we have concerning relationship and marriage, how much of it is surrendered? How much of it is under his leadership? Can we just make a conscious choice and say, you know what? Guide me. 
I know I've carried certain aspects of my life and taken it away from your control. I want to bring every aspect so that when I make choices, I'm making choices out of obedience, not out of mere human calculation. I recognize that my calculation can be limited, my calculation can be weak. For instance, we can plan the whole year, but who will give us life to live it? We can plan anything, but who will ensure that what we plan happens? Can we just make surrender? Show me what I need to see. Help me, help me, help me. I receive grace to obey. That I will walk in obedience. That I will walk in difference to your will. That I will hear your voice and I will follow. He said, when you stand in that park, he will show you that's the way to go. He said, I said before you life and death, choose life. Some of us are going through seasons of calculation. Ah, you have calculated until you are having headache. Just surrender. You have a will on every matter. Concerning this matter, I know you have a will. I surrender my will to you. Help me, help me. I'll follow your leadership. Thank you, Lord Jesus.